All right, so what is this? Hmm. Well, this die cut cutout is pretty cool. There's a big U, some initials. Perhaps you know what I have here. This is the new premium Under Oath double LP, double album. They're only catching safety and define the great line. I thoroughly enjoy both of those records. Um, I was in high school when their only Chasing Safety came out, and I remember seeing them on the Interpunk stage at Warp Tour and being blown away. Um, I had seen them before when they had come through and opened for God Forbid, and they were a much smaller band. Uh, they had a different lead singer and a different sound. They were a lot heavier and darker. And somewhere between um, the changing of times and their only Chasing Safety, they sort of evolved into a, I guess, more of a screamo band than a metal band, but in a good way. Um, and it's finessed in a way that they stand out in a genre that, I guess, was oversaturated um, before it sort of collapsed. But what did Under Oath do? Well, they broke up for a while, and they've recently announced their Rebirth, Rebirth tour where they're playing both of these albums cover to cover in one set. And I'm assuming they'll probably take a break between albums. That's a lot. Um, but either way, it's, um, it's exciting for me because I didn't think I'd ever see them with um, you know, the lineups for those bands. And I'm pretty sure there's tracks off both those albums that I've never heard them play live, even though I've seen them a handful of times. Um, and ironically enough, the last time I saw them live was when my wife and I were first dating. We've been married for over six years now, and, um, well, as you can see, there's two shirts here. One for her, and one for me. The show's in a couple weeks, and I am stoked. So, if you like metal, if you like screamo music, if you just like full energy fun, and you don't, you know, get perturbed by screaming vocals, then I think Under Oath is something you'll enjoy. Um, so let's take the Hot Topic off the top and make Hot Topic out of Under Oath. Right? Is that cheesy? Yeah, maybe a little. Okay, basically, let's spin both of these albums. We'll do a special double video 49 or something, but album 65 and 66 in the 365 series, Under Oath, They're Only Chasing Safety and Define the Great Line. Links for each below. Check them out. Come back. We'll talk about it. So, Under Oath. Under Oath, Under Oath, Under Oath. What did you think? What do you think? What is Under Oath? Well, I want to talk about the band's name, just for one second. What does it mean to be under oath? What, what does that sort of resonate with, regardless of what that means to them or how they came to be that name? I think when I think of the word under oath or being under oath, I sort of find myself in this place of, I guess, a, a volatile space. Some place where I, I have to be honest with myself. Um, where I'm forced to to commit and I'm forced to be, you know, putting myself out there. And I guess when you are under oath, whether that be in a court of law or, um, you know, to a savior or to yourself in the various ways you might be, um, you know, there's a whole space for that. And the interpretation thereof of being under oath or being the band under oath leaves a lot on the table. So you open a book, um, and in their case, religion being a topic of discussion, um, and, and you sort of find yourself bound to theoretical concepts. And I think musically, they sort of bind themselves in this space of screamo. Um, now, uh, we're talking two albums here. They're only chasing safety, which really aligned itself with the pop sensibility and with uh, a more, I guess, commercial uh, outlet. And then you have to find the great line, which was way more metal uh, 
sensible and way more willing to to sort of jump off the bridge and say we're, we're heavier and it's a lot more unforgiving and combining the two somewhere in the middle I think is the brand that is Under Oath um, and they have albums before after uh, and they aren't willing to sacrifice that, you know, they're coming back after a reunion and doing these two records because as a fan, I can tell you, it's because these are the two best records. Um, and they know it. That's why we're here. That's why we're talking about these two records. So I want to say that while I am not under oath right now, if I were, I would give you my honest opinion. So let's jump in to the review of the record which I want to just point out the die cut nature of this double LP, uh, triple gate, you know, triple gatefold here, if you will. It's badass. I mean, you know, you've got the die cut O with the line through it. You've got the die cut U with the line through it. You've got the acronyms. You've got the edging. You've got the emboss, the black on black, the white on white. You've got the openings, you've got the original covers, you've got extra artwork, you've got color 180 gram vinyl, you've got a double album here. Everything about this I am a pro for. I mean, it is, without a doubt, one of the coolest fucking records I own. Now, pardon my language, but just the amount of effort that went into putting this together and making sure it was done right, and I believe it's limited to 5,000 pieces. I have number 2884 is the showmanship that is under Oath the band. I mean, being able to say, we're going to do this. We're going to commit to this. We're going to make this happen, and we're not afraid of it. Primo. That is a sensibility within the band coming through on the vinyl record, and I am super advocate super advocating of that. So, um, Under Oath, thank you for making this very, very cool packaging and making this something that I am happy to own. I, I treasure this. Um, I am a fan. So, only question. O first? Um, oath under? I mean, um, or under oath. It doesn't fold well with the U on top. Was that a mistake? Is that intentional? I don't know. But this is the way I received it. And maybe it's just this trademark emblem. But, um, leaves me questioning. Nonetheless, uh, really, really cool. So let's talk about their only chasing safety. Well, their only chasing safety. Super energy, sing-along songs, get you going sort of make you want to turn it to 11 if there was a spot. You know, the, the vinyl itself, the synth is turned up. I can hear it more than I've ever heard it before. Bass line's a little bit more distinguishable. Um, of course, poppy vocal breaks. What do I notice? Well, I, I've always loved the track with uh, Aaron, I think is his name, from Copeland at the end. Minus Screaming Jesus, just because I'm not really into that um, for whatever reason. But a good album. A good staple album in that brand. And, you know, it's, for me, it's sort of the first page of their book. Um, you know, their Only Chasing Safety really comes out from whatever Under Oath was prior to that and says, this is our band. It's, to me, it's their first record. It's not. The Changing of Times is. But it's where, to me, they begin. It's where this iteration of Under Oath takes shape, and I'm always going to hang a hat on that, because it's the one that makes me profoundly feel attached to them as a band, and it's the one that really set them up in the genre. And for the era, for the timeline, 2003, it's what made them the band that they are right now, and why they're going on the road and doing this again. So, to find the great line comes out, it's heavier, it's darker, it's unforgiving, and it, it plays around in this dark space. The anger level is definitely elevated. And why is that? I don't know. Was there some issue between the band? Was the drummer and his sort of push for that pop sensibility 
falling apart at the seams with the band wanting to go in different directions. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. You know why? Because the record is kick ass. It's it's in your face and, and it still has, I guess, a pop sensibility while not really hinging itself on pop vocal. And I like that about it. I like that I can sing with a, a, a disdain, with a, an anger in my level, but it's 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 from a place of sincerity. It's it's heartfelt emotion and it's raw. And that raw charisma is what gives this its under oathness, if you will. And it being more metal appeals to me as somebody who likes metal more than screamo, as metal is a more, I guess, lifelong genre of music. And I think that to that interpretation I think metal music will always be around where Screamo won't. Under oath did themselves a favor in moving in that direction. You know, it was sort of hip to be what they were or what they sort of defined themselves were as on uh, the changing of times, but they sort of evolved within what it meant to be under oath as a band, rather than playing into what the genre wanted them to be on to find the great line. And that is why they're getting back together and touring again, because they didn't become a staple band in a genre that needed more of that. They did what they needed to do when they were supposed to, and that's why they're different, and that's why they matter. And that's why I'm reviewing these records, because they're important. They're very important. and. Whether or not you like this kind of music, I hope you realize that somebody who has a lot of passion about music, who is a diehard fan of all things smart in music, who is willing to put himself out there and say, this is good or this is bad, would tell you, even if you don't like metal or if you're ashamed of the brand of Screamo, that this has value. So they capitalized on a sound of difference within a space of uniformity and they were ahead of the curve. And that's badass. So I think it embodies the genre sensibly while taking it to the next level. Under Oath as a band did that with no shame. They make it worth something and there are no other Under Oaths out there. There are other screamo bands, there are other metal bands, but there are not other Under Oaths. My closest comparison would be if you like the band Adept, who's never even played or set foot in America. Adept, their first record, their... Oh, another year of disaster is kick-ass. But, not Under Oath. Under Oath is unique. Under Oath falls into their own great line. And for that, I thank them. And I look forward to the show on the 25th. And I hope that you seek out both of these albums. If you like heavy music and you like just putting your emotions on the line for music, listen to these albums. Listen to both of them. And, and let me know what you think. Comment below. Let me know what you think about They're Only Chasing Safety and Define the Great Line. And, and if you don't like this kind of music, I want to know why. Because I am uh, passionate about both of these albums. Um, as a fan and, and as a student of music, I don't care what the genre is. When it's good, it's good, and good is just that. And these are valuable pieces of music for, you know, the, you know, the new millennia, and, and I think they fall into their own wheelhouse. Uh, they set themselves apart from that culture-shocked screamo era, and they make something important here. And, and I'm emotionally attached to it, because I grew up with it. And, and if you can't tell, aside from some of my other reviews, I, I'm passionately uh, committing to this one and wanting my listeners, the few of you there are, the ever-growing audience you are, to, to, to find Under Oath and, and to give them a little bit of your time because they deserve it. And they're going back on the road. It, it means a lot to me, and I hope it means a lot to the rest of their fan base. And I hope that beeping isn't bothering you as bad it's bothering me because it's pissing me off right now. <laughs> but you're just going to have to deal with it because I'm cutting this the way it is because it's coming out raw, and I hope you like that. Because raw is good, and in the space of music and emotion, and the wheelhouse that falls within it, raw is everything. And that's what Under Oak is. They're fucking raw, and they're awesome. And just let it in. Let yourself find it. And when you do, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, thanks for listening. It was really cool reviewing both of these two, sort of taking me back down memory road, you know, 10 plus years with Under Oak as a fan, and... Those of you who know, you get it. And those of you who don't, join us. Uh, it's a good place to be. So, until next time, find me on Facebook, Daily Vinyl Online. Instagram, Daily underscore Vinyl. And, of course, right here on YouTube. 
like the video, subscribe, do all those fun things. And if you share it, 365 album reviews in 2016, we'll stay connected. All right, till next time, much love. Take care.